Hello, this is Charles Arnielden with the University of Vermont, and this presentation is on the Customized Import tool in Definion's Developer. The Customized Import tool provides a powerful and convenient way to batch import data sets into a series of projects in the Definion's Developer workspace. I'd like to begin by taking a quick look at the data that we're going to be importing using the Customized Import tool by providing an overview of the data in a GIS software package. First, I have a thematic layer. That thematic layer consists of water polygons. You're going to notice that the extent or the envelope of these water polygons extends beyond the extent of my raster data. For raster data, I have two types of data. I have both color infrared, three-band aerial imagery, and I also have LiDAR intensity data. Both the imagery and the LiDAR data are tiled data sets. In addition to being tile data sets, these data sets actually overlap one another along the edges. We're going to zoom in here and just examine these overlapping properties very quickly for the color infrared aerial imagery. I'm going to turn off some surrounding tiles. What you're going to notice here is that for each tile, it overlaps the adjacent tiles by an amount of 500 feet. And this overlap is consistent in both the LiDAR intensity data sets and the color infrared imagery data sets. It's important to note that I have a consistent number of tiles, that is I have 16 color infrared imagery tiles and 16 LiDAR intensity tiles. These tiles also follow consistent naming conventions. That is, the imagery tile CIR2 underscore 2 matches up precisely to the LiDAR intensity tile 2 underscore 2. Now let's turn to Definion's developer to examine the customized import process. Once again, the goal of this customized import is to create individual projects for each pair of raster data sets. So each project should contain both a raster tile and the corresponding LiDAR tile, and of course include the appropriate thematic features that fall within those tiles. In order to run a customized import, I have to generate a workspace. I'm going to create a new workspace here, my Definions Developer Environment. Once I have a workspace, I can access the Customized Import tool by right-clicking on the workspace and going down to Customized Import. It's a good idea when you have your Customized Import tool open, if you run previous Customized Imports, to clear those imports out. First thing is to specify a name for your Customized Import process. The second step is to specify the root folder. The root folder is the parent folder containing all the data sets that you want to import. In this case, I'm going to select the folder that contains the subfolders for my imagery, LiDAR, and thematic data sets. Once my root folder is defined, I'm going to select a master file. The only purpose of the master file is a file to test your search string. In this case, I'm going to simply grab the first imagery tile I have, CIR underscore one underscore one, and then I'm going to build the search string, and I'm going to test the search string based on this master file. The search string is really the crux of the customized import process. This is what Definions uses to go through all of your data sets, in this case go through the imagery and LiDAR data sets, pair the appropriate data sets up, and create projects from them. So in this case, I'm going to replace the any folders variable with the name of the folder containing my imagery data, which is imagery. I'm going to leave the scene variable there, but before the scene variable, I'm going to type in four characters. These are the same four characters that precede each and every imagery tile. I can then test this search string on my master file, and you can see here that the search string returns scene one underscore one. It's exactly what we want. Let's turn to the image layers tab now. This is where I can define things such as no data handling policies and aliases for my layer files. In this case, I'm going to set 
the no data handling policy for all my layers to be zero. So if there's pixel values of zero, they're going to be treated as uh, no data areas. I'm also going to take the time here to define aliases. This is particularly useful if I have other data sets or rule sets rather that make use of alias names in the rule sets, especially for any customized procedures. So I'm going to provide alias names for each of my three bands here, the near infrared band, the red band, and the green band. You can see here that for this file, the color infrared imagery, the search string that we defined in the workspace is being used. I'm going to go ahead and run the customized import. So what the customized import doing is it's grabbing all of those imagery tiles and for each imagery tile it's creating its own project. If I go in and examine the contents of these projects, you can see that for each project I have three bands, the near infrared, red, and green, with the aliases correctly defined. But of course I want to also include a LiDAR tile in each project, so I'm going to remove these projects and repeat the customized import, only this time including the LiDAR data. I don't have to define a new search string for the LiDAR data. Definions is pretty smart in this case. I can get away with just simply adding another file here. This is largely because my imagery tiles and my LiDAR tiles follow similar naming conventions. If your corresponding tiles did not follow naming conventions, you would need to go ahead and design a new search string. But you can see here under file number two, which corresponds to my LiDAR data, the search string there has been defined correctly. For the LiDAR intensity data, I'm going to remove the no data handling policy, and I'm also going to change the alias to LiDAR. I'm going to rerun that customized import now with these new settings. Once again, I have a separate project for each of my 16 tiles. The difference in this case is that now these projects also contain the LiDAR layer. However, if I preview one of these projects, you're going to notice that I have a problem, specifically that I have this black area. It's actually not a no data area, and it's not the edge of a tile. This is caused by a mismatch between the LiDAR data and the imagery. This problem is caused by the fact that the LiDAR data is acquired at a higher resolution, thus a different pixel size than the imagery data. I'm going to remove these project files and show you how we correct this problem using the customized import tool. To correct this problem, all I have to do is go to the Scene tab here and choose to use geocoding. And I'm also going to specify the units for which my data is in. This is also a good time to go ahead and specify the thematic layer that I want to use. I'm going to add a layer here. I don't need to do a search string because I only have one thematic layer. And in this case, I'm adding a shape file, the water polygons that we examined earlier, and I'm going to assign an alias. Let's run the customized import for the final time. Once again, creating 16 projects here. Let's examine one of those projects. You can notice that now we no longer have the mismatch between the LiDAR data and the imagery. They seem to line up just fine. If we look inside this project, we're going to notice that in addition to my four raster layers, the three imagery bands, and the LiDAR data, I also have my thematic layer defined. And if we take a look at the view settings here, you're going to notice that the thematic layer, only those thematic features that fall within the tile have been retained. This is important because there's no need to clip down your thematic data set to match each one of those tiles prior to running a customized import. That concludes this presentation on the customized import tool in Definions Developer. Please feel free to contact me if you have any questions.